thank you very much dr alvia and uh, uh, happy to be here and uh, i'll try and make this uh, presentation uh, a simple one um and thank you for uh, everyone who's there and uh, listening to the presentations from various speakers and uh, those who are uh, following the literature on uh, early childhood caries uh, i'm sure you would have seen this manual uh, by the world health organization uh, called ending uh, childhood dental caries it's a wonderful uh, manual uh, put together by the who and among the strategies what they have given there uh sorry there are eight strategies there and uh, uh, one of the if you look at the uh, table of contents there uh, the first thing they say uh, is uh, early diagnosis uh, early diagnosis is one of the approach they given eight different approaches to tackle early childhood caries and one of the approaches early diagnosis and um, uh, being in a country like india so it's it's far far more relevant Uh, because if you could uh, do this uh, at the earliest possible time uh, it will be a big um, game changer and also it will uh, lead to a lot of uh, 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 reduction in the disease burden and also uh, reduction in uh, economic costs associated with rehabilitating and treating these children uh, so looking it into that the earliest changes on the teeth um, uh having spent uh, some amount of time since uh, 2010 11 uh on in the in the field of early childhood caries uh this is one of the important change uh, as a practice in pediatric dentist i i uh, 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 adapted into my practice as well and uh, the earliest change uh, at one point of time uh we knew that you should have a first dental visit by 1 year of age or as soon as the primary tooth comes into the mouth uh now in the last few years uh, since this paper came in i think uh, uh, many of you are aware and some a uh, couple of times this paper was cited here um uh, in the in this conference as well and uh, this paper has um uh, completely changed uh, uh, my perspective in terms of uh looking at all these risk factors uh, associated with early childhood caries and the results uh, uh narrow down to among the numerous risk factors the most important risk factor um uh was uh, found to be enamel defects and later on this was also uh in the next year uh, it was also re uh, asserted by another umbrella review where they put in all all the systematic reviews associated with early childhood caries and they reiterated the same results so when you have one particular risk factor overriding the numerous risk factors as far as early childhood caries is concerned if you look at the enamel defects it was 14 times uh, higher uh, risk uh, uh, to have cavities uh, 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 compared to teeth uh which does not have enamel defects so this is as a clinician you know as a practicing pediatric dentist uh when you look at this i i never had this perspective um until uh, when we started doing this work in 2017 18 now uh, 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 uh i look for these uh, uh opportunities to uh identify these defects whenever i have a chance to examine an infant uh and this is uh, kind of dramatically change the way we uh, approach uh, uh towards preventing early childhood caries having said that and uh, there are uh, in a, in a broader perspective uh if you look at enamel hyperplasia or enamel defects or a white spot lesion whether it's diffuse or demarcated white patches or lines uh, on another way a uh, non cavitated lesions uh, in in a in a common broader perspective uh, probably histologically or the origin wise it could have some different mechanisms but uh, as a in a clinical presentation uh, it all up, uh, uh, one way or other it appears the same so now can we identify these things as soon as the tooth erupts into the mouth so what are the earliest changes on the teeth uh, you know in when you when you look at the newly erupted teeth into the oral cavity uh, how does this appear uh, clinically so if you look at i'll show you some pictures here uh, these are uh, these are uh, some pictures 
uh, uh, the first one uh, is on a um, you know 14 month 12 or 14 month old infant and the tooth uh, um, erupts with these white patches um, uh, and you look at the another one there uh, uh, even though they have some of these uh, white patches and lines and uh, even the other one on the canine so uh, uh, at one point of time earlier days I used to think that these are uh, changes which has happened after the tooth erupted into the mouth because of plaque accumulation uh, but uh, after going through these literature and coming uh, identifying that uh, it is not that it's these white patches are uh, have uh, the tooth erupts with these patches erupts with these defects uh, enamel defects or enamel hyperplasia um, it's very important to uh, uh, identify these things early as a clinician and uh, the moment we perceive this as the earliest change uh, the urgency in which we are going to address these issues will change so uh, uh, but how many uh, pediatric dentists uh, will write a diagnosis uh, when you have a patient presenting like this um, will we write a diagnosis as early childhood caries uh, when a patient arrives like this uh, uh, the definition of early childhood care says one or more cavitated or non-cavitated lesion I think uh, the, the, so it, it said that even if you have one non-cavitated lesion uh, on any of the two surfaces uh, it is called as early childhood caries as per the uh, definition but do we diagnose this uh, uh, when in the absence of visible uh, cavitated uh, uh, lesions on the uh, uh, anterior teeth when there are no visible cavitated lesions and all of them are non-cavitated do we see that as a early childhood caries so it's a very important uh, perception change uh, which has to be brought in and even if you look at the posterior teeth and uh, having uh, we have uh, at least from 2016-17 onwards we could successively maintain um, um, uh, cohorts of children with cleft lip and palate so we have seen them from uh, you know without with no teeth from that time to uh, two, two and a half years, we have seen uh, noticed uh, teeth erupting uh, with these defects and uh, within no time it breaks down if appropriate preventive measures are, are not taken. So it's very important to identify, uh, not only understand the definition of early childhood caries as uh, uh, presence of one or more uh, cavitated or non-cavitated lesion, but these are the earliest changes. Uh, which are noticed as soon as the tooth comes into the mouth uh, in the anterior teeth it can be on the label side it can even be on the palatal side and uh, these are poorly mineralized hyperplastic uh, more permeable and porous enamel so this is a very big uh, change uh, in the perception for me as a clinician um, uh, to identify uh, uh, we, we see very small number of infants uh, either in the practice or in the uh, pediatric dentistry department uh, who reports to you with these kind of changes. But now, uh, having said that, um, uh, you know, uh, even, uh, even now, uh, pediatric dentists, uh, we see uh, parents coming and telling that we don't know that pediatric dentists existed and they always gone to a dentist. They say it's all primary teeth, it will fall, new teeth will come. And the crucial time uh, uh, of this uh, identifying these early changes is lost and eventually the child goes through a full-fledged uh, development of uh, uh, early childhood caries with multiple uh, cavitated lesions and uh, all the damage. So now it's important to, uh, uh, with all these uh, uh, years of uh, work and uh, thinking, you know, how, who will diagnose this now, you know, uh, is it going to be the uh, parents or the caretakers or the dentist or the pediatrician and uh, I, I feel that probably the best way is to look at uh, uh, empower uh, the parents or caretakers to uh, make them identify Yes, these are the early changes of uh, 
uh, early childhood care is so you might want to be alert or or seek uh, uh, immediate care because the most severe form of early childhood care is uh, or uh, always hyperplasia associated you know you the entire teeth breaks down in uh, 14 16 18 months you the teeth becomes almost uh, root stem and so it's important to carry this message i believe that probably the first bed uh, can be Uh, if we have a question whether to take it to the dentist or the pediatric dentist uh, or pediatricians or parents or caretakers uh, i would say that probably we should uh, approach uh, uh, the parents or caretakers and uh, uh, that's the one of the best way because if they uh, identify that these things as the earliest changes uh, so it's important to develop some self reporting tools um uh, which we uh, developed i think dr ankita has made the presentation as part of the sag uh, about the mac chart and we wrote a letter to colgate to uh, earlier uh, last year uh, to put a message uh, uh, like this in the in the toothpaste pack uh, you can, i i'll show you this picture in the next slide as well and also i i will uh, we will also appeal to the international association of pediatric dentistry uh, to take this campaign like how they have in uh, the cigarette packs uh, the there is a cancerous lesion and there's a warning there you know it's very easy to uh, take up a public health campaign like this if the associations and like minded uh, uh, people uh, come together and uh, that could probably become the uh, one of the most effective public health campaign and uh, we wrote to them and this is a very simple way you can you can uh, this is just a part of the mac chart which we used in the uh, Cle uh, cleft cohorts uh, since 2017 18 and this has been very very uh, useful and impactful uh, because even a, a parent or a caretaker with very very minimal um, um, uh, education and uh, as they were already oriented to uh, uh, these potential changes on the newly erupting teeth and uh, we have already told them even before the child got the teeth that these are the earliest changes and if any of these things changes you find on the your infant's teeth newly erupted teeth uh, you know you lift the lip and examine and if there's any such change you immediately visit us and we have a very uh, close to more than 50 percentage of the parents uh, brought the children for a, a examination so that's a very important uh, uh, impact and uh, currently this uh, uh, paper uh, is under review and this is part of the sag the sustained anticipatory guidance approach which we use uh, in, in the in the center and it is very very effective uh, we could uh, bring majority of the children uh, cavity free and even if one or two of them um, uh, have developed some cavitated lesions it's it's a very small uh enamel breakdown and where we could arrest that uh, with some minimally invasive strategies so it's been very uh, in, uh, effective tool uh, uh, has been in our uh, kitty so uh, this uh, uh, comprises as a, a one of the measure which uh, uh, is listed in the strategies health education and community enga engagement for uh, prevention of early childhood caries Uh, so having said that we'll move on to the uh, next uh, probably uh, uh, empowering the pediatrician uh, because these are as far as india is concerned uh, invariably or majority of the children who we are rehabilitating in the operating room for full mouth rehabilitation uh, invariably they have seen their pediatrician and the uh, pediatricians uh, are also not aware that Uh, uh the teeth can break down and it can cause uh, so much of um, uh, quality of life issues for a growing child and uh, uh, one of the best way we could do this is uh, we could integrate with the year one vaccination visits and uh, almost every pediatrics department in the country have a vaccination clinics you know, all the medical schools even the public uh, hospital setup have this vaccination clinic so invariably a uh, very 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 few a small percentage of uh, parents might miss the miss the vaccination for the children other means so if you can integrate uh, 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 as dr chandrasekhar sir also told in the morning today that uh, medical dental integration is a very very important way to uh, deliver this uh, mandate or take this approach uh, uh, forward and it's also essential to make the pediatricians understand that 
uh, uh, because most of the time I have seen the parents have visited either a dentist or a pediatrician when the teeth is slightly starting to break down, uh, uh, you know, at 12 months, 14 months or 16 months. And it, it's very important at that point of time what advice was given to the mother or caretaker. Uh, uh, and many times it's, they've been told that it's primary teeth, it will fall and new teeth will come. So the parent take it lightly and, and eventually the teeth breaks down and uh, progressively uh, the child, uh, the teeth become sensitive to thermal changes and physical stimulus. And eventually once all the other issues develop, they understand that yes, now it has to be treated and uh, eventually they go in for a full mouth rehabilitation in the operating room. So this is a strategy again um, uh, uh, in, in, in connection with the uh, approach what was suggested in the WHO manual, uh, building a supportive framework for integration of ECC prevention and control in overall health initiatives. So it's, uh, it should be linked to the RBSK uh, the, uh, uh, and the maternal child health programs. Uh, it's very important that we take this uh, to these uh, 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 approach as well. Now then, what, what about the dentist, the pediatric dentist? It's very important. Even I can say for myself as a pediatric dentist, uh, I have I didn't have this kind of a perspective uh, seven eight years back. Uh, 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 even though I was a pediatric dentist for more than a decade at that point of time, so it's uh, there is again a uh, important uh, mandate to take these uh, uh, messages to the dentist, general dentist, because. Um, a majority of the children are treated by general dentists, uh, at least in India, uh, the large number of children are treated by de dentists, general dentists, uh, only a small percentage of children are treated by periodic dentists. So it's very important to take the mandate to the dentist uh, as well, you know, you, hey, you cannot um, uh, afford to say that these are primary teeth that will fall and new teeth will come, all this kind of things. And we, we did a small exercise and Dr. Kritika was uh, uh, he's, he was our colleague in the department in the center as well. So we did an exercise uh, with all the dental faculties in the dental school here. Uh, we did a small uh, thing like the uh, it's called fit talks. It's the first dental visit talks, and we made a one-to-one -one presentation to uh, uh, many of the dentists. Uh, we brainstormed the presentation, what we should uh, tell them, and what we should show, and. Uh, to our surprise that many of the dentists uh, who are specialists in other specialities uh, couldn't identify or couldn't see that these are the earliest changes and uh, you know it needs it's an it's kind of an emergency uh, you need to treat them uh, uh, at the earliest you know uh, it has to be attended at the earliest point of time so we uh, kind of did this uh, exercise uh, within the dental school where uh, we are working now and that's again a, a format of uh, health education and community engagement for uh, prevention of ECC. It will come in that approach as well. So having said that, um, uh, now some early diagnosis uh, of early childhood caries, we, have, we are exploring some possibilities of developing some simple non-invasive tests. Uh, one of the uh, possible things which came out of uh, our paper uh, that making some putty impressions of uh, newly erupted teeth uh, of, of the primary incisor and uh, uh, we subject the impression uh, under scanning electron microscope and we could see that more voids uh, represent a more permeable enamel, more porous enamel and uh, we, are, we are exploring uh, whether we could, this is uh, from one of a couple of papers uh, which came up uh, from the center a few years back and this is how the impression the putty impression of the labial surface of the enamel on a, a child with early childhood caries and child without early childhood caries. So we are working on some feasibility, you know, if you can uh, take a small impression of the uh, once all the four incisors come into the mouth and explore, uh, investigate the impression uh, uh, under an SEM, uh, set up a lab, SEM lab where the impressions come in your screen and you can put a, a risk score uh, based on the uh, permeability of enamel. So that's um, um, uh, one of the things which we are looking at right now. And uh, uh, so just to conclude, um, uh, early diagnosis of early childhood caries is a priority. Uh, probably the cheapest way to intervene and prevent early childhood caries might be having early first dental visits prior to age one or by early identification of early changes on the teeth. However, we are far from a predictable process for this and uh, ECC researchers need to prioritize this 
and find more than one solution uh, applicable to various socio-cultural settings. And let's do this exercise uh, as soon as possible. And thank you very much for listening to this. I'll be happy to have uh, if there are any questions and also to discuss any uh, comments or opinions on these on the presentation.